Hey guys, Dragon Drop Coding here. I'm your host, Christian Mishka, and we left off creating this little bullet simulation thing where you can shoot at the mouse and you're a cat that is just shooting bullets, I guess. Um, so yeah, let's add some enemy spawning. We're going to be using our knowledge of cloning to create enemies, and uh, yeah, let's go for it. All right, so let's create and let's grab a new sprite from the library. Uh, we'll choose to be our enemy. I think bats look pretty spooky, so we're going to choose this bat. Okay, uh, he is much too big for our cat, so we're going to shrink him down, set his size to like 35%. I think that looks perfect. So now we have a bat and uh, we can shoot. Well, we want multiple of the bats to come on the screen, right? So we're going to need to actually do a cloning thing. Um, so if you remember, with our bullet, we had to hide the original sprite because we didn't want it to show up. We're going to do the same thing here. So we can just use clones. So I'm going to hide him and then whenever we create a clone of him, I'll show it. So that's pretty simple. We haven't created any clones yet. So the original sprite I'm going to use to create more of it. So basically forever we want to make new enemies. We're always going to make new, new enemies. Uh, but we're going to wait, right? Because we don't want to make new enemies all the time. So let's just wait one second for right now. And we'll create clone of myself. Okay. So wait one second. There he is. I'll drag him over. So he creates another one. One second. Uh, he just kind of creates them every second and there's a bunch of them in the same spot right cool but now we want them to go to different parts of the screen so just to start out I'm going to go to a random position okay so now there's a bat there's a bat every second there's a bat right so that's pretty cool they're going to random position that's basically enemy spawning it's kind of weird that they're all on this side of the screen okay there's one over there so really random nobody's over here Come on, Scratch, you can do better than that. Okay, well, I guess it is kind of random. Anyways, that's how that, that's a very simple way to do it. We can make it a little bit more complex in a minute. Um, let's do, let's do, yeah, let's, let's do two seconds, um, just because it's a little quick. Now, what do we want our enemies to do in this game? Why don't we make them go to the cat? So what we're going to do is we're going to point towards the cat which is sprite one let me rename that just because sprite one is not a good name this is our cat uh, okay so the bat two is pointing to the cat and then forever we will move it towards the cat oh and uh we've got you know a flapping costume so why not use that so why don't we go next costume and make it pause for like you know, a little bit all right so let's try that out so there's a bat flapping towards us there's another one there's another one they're coming from all different directions okay that's pretty cool and then let's see I don't really want the bats to rotate so I'm gonna just do side to side and let's see how that looks okay cool there they are now you notice they go through the cat, but that's okay. We'll fix that in a minute. Um, yeah, so now the bats all go into attack the cat. Um, cool. So that's kind of how we create enemies. That's one way to do it anyways. You notice that random position kind of puts them right next to the cat, and that's not exactly fair. So one thing we could do instead is um, first we could go to... Let's see, how would we do that? First, what we could do is put them in the middle of the screen and then rotate them in a random direction and move them out. Let's see if that makes sense. So basically what we do is we go to zero, zero, which is actually where the cat is. Uh, let me show what I'm doing here for a second. So the get, so it's, so it's going to zero, zero, then it's going to point in a random direction uh, let's see, I don't think they've got random direction. So we're going to create our own script here. Just use the random. And if you click on this drop down, you'll see it goes from, you know, 180. But we know that there's 360 degrees in a circle. So we'll put that in point direction. So you notice that he'll point in a random direction. I can show his direction right here. If I double click this, negative 122, 165, negative 30. 
right? So these are all random directions. So if we do that right after we go to zero, zero, and then we move out a bunch. So basically we move him to the middle, we rotate in a random direction, and we just move out a bunch. That way he's not close to the cat. So we can move like uh, maybe 500 steps. So now he's up there, he's over there, he's basically at different edges of the screen. 500 might be a little much, so maybe 250. Right, okay, so I think that's pretty good. So now he's kind of like, they'll spawn in a circle around the cat, which is at the middle. So instead of going towards a random, to a random position, which is one way of doing it, we're just gonna do this one instead. And we'll move that. So now, there he is flying in towards our cat from the edges of the screen, not in a random position. Okay, so that's beautiful. So now, basically, I want a way for them to die. So if they are touching a bullet, they need to die. So if the bat is touching a bullet, it should delete itself. Okay, now you're gonna notice something weird because this is 0.2 seconds. Um, it might be it might glitch a little bit. Like notice I'm shooting I'm shooting him, but he didn't die. That's because it was waiting during that time. So the way around that is to just do another script and another forever. So that way it's always constantly checking if he's touching the bullet. And uh, all of these, all of the when I start his clones will happen at the same time for all of the clones. So it will do this one. This is kind of more of the visuals, and then it will do this one simultaneously. This will be like you know making sure there's no weights while it's you know checking to see if it's hit by a bullet. So now it'll always get hit by the bullet and die. So now I can shoot them, and they die. Okay, so now we want them to, if they hit the cat, we want something else to happen. So if it touches the cat, let's just, instead of doing life and stuff in this one, you can add life later. That can be, that'll probably be in another video. Uh, you can implement that in here. I'm not gonna do that in this series, but what I'm just gonna do is when it's touching the cat, I'm gonna broadcast a message saying game over. So broadcast message, new message, game over. And then We'll make a new screen just saying to vector, basically just saying you lose. Try again. You can do better next time. Let me type that better. You lose. Okay, there we go. So we'll just make that hide when the flag is clicked and then when it receives game over it will show and stop everything. Alright, cool. So we can we have a cat, we can shoot the bats. If we let a bat come and touch us, then it should be game over. You lose. You can do better next time. And that is how you do enemy spawning. Uh, it's pretty simple, very straightforward. Basically, the spawning part is the harder part. If you just wanted to go to random position, or we use these three blocks to kind of make it go in a radius around the guy, you can do other things to make that more interesting, more dynamic. Maybe you always want your guys to spawn at one spot, and then they can move around. You know, you can add much more complicated logic to the enemies, which would be cool. We'll probably get to that in another video, maybe in one of the advanced sections. And then also, um, you want to add life to them, right? Because that would be an interesting thing to do. That will also be in the advanced section, probably. Um, so yeah, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.